America pay reparations to millions of African Americans for the centuries of slavery that their ancestors endured. As we reported last spring, that issue has been discussed for decades, but only on the fringes of the civil rights movement. In the last several months, it's been gaining increasing prominence in campus protests and debates, in the opinion columns of editorial pages, and in a growing number of city council resolutions. It's a key item on the agenda of the UN Conference on Racism, which opened on Friday in South Africa. In the US, the National Coalition for Reparations is making its demands increasingly loud and clear. Anything we've ever got from America has been as a consequence of struggle, and it will be struggle to get reparations. We have to build a movement that will create the kind of crisis for America that it has no alternative but to give our people what is our right. Uhuru! That was Omali Yeshitela, one of the more radical speakers. But the demand for reparations is now part of the mainstream. Randall Robinson is head of the human rights group TransAfrica, which helped in the effort to end apartheid in South Africa. There's little in the way of, of dispute that the United States government was complicit in a crime against a section of its own population. That the government benefited from that, uh, that crime. Cotton exports produce more in the way of foreign exchange earnings than all other American exports put together. That cotton was taxed. It made our country wealthy. That's something most black Americans were quietly aware of. But the demand to share that wealth has become a rallying cry. Not until recently have um, uh, what I call blacks in suits um, uh, joined uh, this issue. And, and so um, uh, now you see uh, major figures uh, from uh, major black institutions now embracing this uh, as, uh, as a position. Robinson's talking about institutions like the NAACP and men like Lerone Bennett Jr., the executive editor of Ebony Magazine. Somebody in the media raised a question last night about welfare. We're not talking about welfare, we're talking about back pay. Bennett was addressing the Chicago City Council in support of a resolution demanding the U.S. Congress address the issue of reparation. Has any other group anywhere suffered so long and so grievously and received so little in recompense and apologies? Has any other group anywhere bled more and cried more? and died more. The Chicago City Council passed the resolution 46 to 1, joining similar actions by a number of other U.S. cities. The lone dissenting voice in Chicago was Alderman Brian Doherty, who represents a white immigrant district. He says his constituents had no part of slavery and can't be held responsible. But the issue clearly struck a nerve in Chicago's poorer black neighborhoods, places like Alderman Dorothy Tillman's Third Ward. America owe us a debt. We're here to collect. So those who want to come and help, let them come on. And those who don't, don't get in the way because we're going to run over you. Ms. Tillman says it was blacks who literally dug the foundations of America. Certainly America grew off the backs of blacks in terms of free labor. And we're, we're the great nation we are but what, because of that. Uh, the moment you discuss, the, the, you raise the, the idea of reparations, mm -hmm. the next question mm -hmm. is reparations from whom? Well, and we, how much? I think we get reparations from both government and private, from corporate. The Jewish community have received reparations from all over the place, and they have done that because they gave free labor and they was hurt. The German government and industry did agree to pay reparations to slave laborers who survived World War II. And the U.S. did pay reparations to Japanese Americans interned during the war. Those payments ignited a spark among African Americans. But Glenn Lowry, the director of Boston University's Institute on Race and Social Division, says reparations is the wrong word, the wrong idea. This is not an undertaking, in my judgment, that can or should be formulated in this country in racial terms. When we get serious 
about doing something about poverty in the inner cities in this country, it will be because we as a nation are committed to doing it for all Americans. Our communities are devastated because you still see the residual of slavery. And then you look at the disparity in the school system and you see how bad our schools are. And we're still struggling. And every other ethnic group is able to, to, to amass wealth and to get an economic base but black folks. And that goes right back to slavery. Most blacks are not poor in our country. Walter Williams is a conservative uh, columnist who is also a professor of economics uh, the, at George Mason uh, University. He says America has been the land of opportunity for blacks. The greatest gains over some of the highest hurdles in the shortest period of time than any racial group in the history of mankind. Surely you agree that slavery was just about the most dreadful kind of institution. Yes. And that, that people, your people, suffered intensely as a result. I agree that slaves suffered intensely, but however, I believe that every single black living in the United States has personally benefited from the suffering of our ancestors. We have far greater freedoms than any African in Africa. And how did we get here? Well, it was through slavery. And you should say they should count their blessings that they're in America and... Oh, yes. That's an outrageous argument, in my opinion. This is what one says to an immigrant who washes up on one's shores from a leaky boat. You say, welcome to our great country, get to work. Where would you have been if we hadn't given you a chance? This is not what you say to the descendants of six or eight or ten generations of natives of the American soil. What sort of message does this push for reparations send to black Americans and white Americans? Well, I'm not sure. But see, one of the things I, that I find disturbing about many of these demands, it kind of says that someone else determines your destiny. I find that offensive. Is it perpetuating a, a kind of cult of victimhood? Maybe so. I always tell people when they're down, I say, it might not be your fault that you're down, but it's your duty to get up. I mean, you can't help that you were born in a certain environment. You can't help that maybe you had the odds against you. But damn it, it's your duty to get up and try. I'm just curious, is slavery something that you are conscious, or at least in your subconscious, pretty much all the time? No, is the answer to that question. Um, or perhaps I'd put it this way. The fact that I descend from slaves has shaped my life in a profound way. But the injury of slavery does not uh, throb. I don't feel the wound. What outrages me much more is to look across this great, rich country and to see in the center of our great cities people living in despair, people who are mostly black and brown, living in conditions that are worse than you'd find in almost any other industrial advanced nation in the world. He blames slavery and a hundred years of government-sanctioned discrimination that followed. But if compensation is to be made, who would foot the bill? What about those Americans who said, look, I came here in the 20s, or my forefathers came at the turn of the century, uh, long after slavery. We never benefited, as you described, from, from slave owning or... or well, first of all, nobody's, and, nobody's suggesting that they are culpable or responsible. That's, that's not... But they are the taxpayers who, that's not, that's who not are the issue. putting up the money. When government incurs uh, a debt or responsibility, government is obligated to, to honor that. How much money are we talking about? Uh, the estimates of uh, unpaid slave wages would run anywhere from $1.4 to $10 trillion. In wage discrimination alone, the cost of blacks uh, from 1929 to 1969 is $1.6 trillion. While many in the reparations movement want individual cash payments, Robinson and others suggest something different. There would be uh, support for uh, education, dramatic intervention from, uh, from, from birth uh, through college for those who have been victimized and seem to be frozen at the bottom of, of American society. And that would be massive infusions of cash and capital, uh, economic development uh, in, the, uh, in, in the black community. What do you think would be the effect within 
black society if the government did pay billions upon billions upon billions in reparation. It would have the same effect of, 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 the, of the five trillion dollars that have been spent since 1965 fighting the war on poverty. It, many of the problems that the black community face today, they're worse than they were in 1965. It matters illegitimacy, family breakdown, crime, et cetera, et cetera. We're simply talking about giving people what is their due without which they can never be successful. How can one expect a child going to a school that is uh, under-equipped, uh, uh, poorly funded, to have any chance to compete with a child who has every opportunity to succeed in American society? If the game must be played, let it be played fairly. We're not doing that. We never have. And you're suggesting that money is the answer. Money is the answer to everything. Well, certainly, no, I didn't say that. Money is a major part of the answer. But the answer has to begin, and I think this is just as important as money. The answer must begin with an acceptance of responsibility for what happened. But even that may be a long time coming, according to Congressman Tony Hall of Ohio. In 1997, he tried to get Congress to pass a one-sentence resolution apologizing for slavery. I've never been part of an issue where I received so much hate mail in all my life. From your own constituents? From my own constituents and from people around the country. Did any of your colleagues in the House say, look, just don't touch them, this one. This is just going to be too divisive, too hot to handle. You're just going to get into trouble with it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them did. Yeah. Hall's resolution never even reached a vote. You think this apology will come anytime soon? I think that uh, it probably won't pass while I'm in Congress. I think it's going to be a long time. What I really don't quite get is why those words are so hard to utter in this house. It shows that this very simple gesture, it shows there's a lot of hate in the country, there's a lot of discrimination. We say to other countries, around the world all the time, that you must have the courage to revisit your past and to make right the misdeeds of that past. But we are unwilling to do it ourselves. Don't you think the issue is very interesting, but it really is pie in the sky? You do a thing because it is the right thing to do. And if you do it long enough, well enough, and if it is right, Ultimately, you will prevail. We will prevail on this issue as we have on other great human rights issues because it is right. Virginia, I warn you, just this once, keep your dreadful opinion to yourself. Get out of my way! You'll only accept them! Virgilia, what a surprise. Hello, Brett. Hello, Ori. Virginia. I hadn't heard you were visiting. Well, no wonder I'm the best kept secret in this family. Do you know that George tried to lock me away in the attic? But I managed to escape because I found this teeny tiny window and I crawled out. <laughs> Virginia, please. Well, you'll all be happy to hear that I'll be leaving first thing in the morning for Chambersburg. That's right. To help in the work of the great John Brown. Have you heard of him? Who hasn't? He and his five sons butchered slavery settlers in Kansas. He's nothing but a murderer. I expected you to say something like that. To slander anybody who dares to do something about slavery? You should never have allowed her to stay. Julia, you promised me. Is planning massacres the way you're going to help him? John Brown is the new messiah. And one day he'll lead your slaves in a great revolution. And any man that stands in our way will die in blood and fire. And you'll be the first. We're leaving now. Come on, Brad. Oh, no, Ari. Wait, please. 
You are my flesh and blood, but this time you've gone too far. Now I want you out of this house. No. Mother, let them go. They won't listen to the truth. That's one thing too much for a southerner to bear. The truth? <laughs> you don't even know the meaning of the word. And I am sick and tired of taking the blame for every wrong that's ever been done in the South. And I will not stand here and be lied to by some filthy twist. Hori, that's enough. Crazy woman. You and your black breeding fawns, where do you get such fantasies? From yellowback novels? And does just thinking about it arouse you? Is that why you married Grady? To find out for yourself? I told you to stop it. You are an evil man. And evil sees evil in everything. But you and your kind are finished. I warned you this day would come and it's here! Shut up! Shut your mouth! And get back to your nigger husband where you belong! I think that apologies are in order. This time, I will not accept them. This time, you'll offer one to all of us. You are taking her part in this. I take issue with her words and her ways. But my sister's on the right side. Then we have nothing more to say to each other. You're right. We haven't. I'm on welfare right now, for real. If you put that car in there, we got food stamps. And yo, I'm glad to get the food stamps. Why would you want to get free money? We have to repair the damaged bond between our people and their government manifested in the way the welfare system works. We have to end welfare as we know it. For the people that want to call up the welfare, man, I think that's terrible. Now, you know how hard, you know how hard it is for people to live without nothing? You owe me 40 acres in the mule anyway. For real. Give it to you, bro. Yeah, it's that old school shit, about 12 years old. Let's get physical, operate your brain to function. I remember the guards at the junction Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I summed it up as the ace on something Known on the microphone is crazy crucial Dip below on the MC like you and doing you something So step to the shit right now Kicking on the yang in my goddamn town Knowing it's fresher, a damn bitch deadly Dead devil doing, cause I am the UN I do you be funky, fast funky, new get hype You motherfucking right I do ace hard Break it down short sure, anytime A serious outstanding Don't talk. 
100% of excellent active ingredients If they sauce elements, fire, water, gold, earth, wood Yo, do the knowledge because it is good Enough to overstuff jumbo pack For the like a song, it'll never be a track About a nigga couldn't figure how to put a 